Around five years ago, I used Unity for the first time. I just recently cracked open my old laptop to see what was on it. And it is flipping slow. In the past five years, I've created so many projects. Many of them unfinished, but all of them learning experiences. Many of these games have only been seen by my own eyes, but in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you so you can get your own ideas and inspiration from them. So, like I said, about five years ago, I started using Unity for the first time. I was about 14 years old at the time, and I was doing lots of things like playing video games like Minecraft and CSGO, and I was interested in how to make games. How do these people make these games? So, while browsing YouTube, I found a, a tutorial about Unity and how to make your first simple game. And that brings us to my first game. Like I said, I followed the tutorial. It's basically just a very simple game. You move around this cube, you gotta try and dodge this red cube, or if you hit it, you die. And you have to try to get to the green cube in order to complete the level and move on to the next one. Basically, it was a very simple game, and it was just about learning the fundamentals of Unity. Fast forward a few weeks into the future, and I was working on my own game. I liked this low-poly style I had seen on YouTube, so I did some low-poly modeling using Blender. Started making this game that was kind of like a supposed to be a survival game. Basically, you could only do a few things like chop trees, and man, those those sidestep animations though. Anyways, I learned a lot about animation and I could do some other things like move around logs. I think I was making some sort of building system. Anyways, I lost interest and moved on to something else. Those sidestep animations were definitely the best part though. So over the next few months, I got interested in Android games and started learning how to make them and upload them to the Google Play Store. So the first Android game I made is called Cloud Jumper. It's very simple, you basically just swiped and you jumped to the next cloud and you had to get to the end of the level to complete it. I made a bunch of levels and they got increasingly harder. And I also made this uh, boundless mode which was basically randomly generated clouds that you had to jump on and basically you had to try and get the best score. So this right here is the next Android game I made called Roll On. I was pretty proud of this game. You're basically a ball that infinitely rolls and you have to click the yellow cubes to uh, keep the ball from hitting the red cube because if you hit the red cube then you died. I don't really know how I came up with the idea, but uh, it worked. Moving on to the next Android game I made, this one was called Mad Hops, and I remember I made this around Easter, uh, that's why it's a bunny, and basically it was just a mini exploration game where you explore this little low poly map that I made, and you had to find all 10 carrots basically, and they were kind of hidden around the map. It was a fairly simple, relaxing game to play really. Holy flip, the amount of tutorial text on the screen when you first start playing is crazy. Anyways, this is the next game. It's called Planetary Pioneer. This was also an Android game. It was set in space, as you can see. This was like one of the first games that I really added a lot of things to. You could fly around, collect resources, and then actually build a base. When I tried building the base though, the uh, game crashed, so I don't know what's up with that. I was obviously a pro 14-year-old video game developer, so we don't need to talk about the crashes, right? Anyways, you could do other things like find these random ships around and, you know, dog fight with them. But the, the controls are just so hard, I literally couldn't do anything. I also found myself kind of go out of control every once in a while and just spin infinitely. It's a perfect game. I don't know what you're talking about. Perfect game. So that's about it for the Android games that I made that I actually published. They're absolutely terrible, but if for some reason you don't care. The links are in the description. This next game I made was basically a game of luck. It was called Risky Rails and you were a minecart infinitely rolling down a track and you had to pick one of three directions before coming to this intersection and then you would go that direction and there was a chance that that direction would be blocked and you would die. That's about it for that one, you can tell why I moved on. Okay, this next game I made was called Mars and as you can tell by the title, it was set on Mars. Basically we were just a ship that landed on Mars and you could really just do some basic things like build these little huts and open and close the door and refill your oxygen, get in and out of the captain's seat. That's about it. <laughs> I obviously wanted to make a cool like Mars survival game, but I got bored. Okay, this next game was called The Corridor and it was a, a horror game I made on Halloween night. This is my reaction. What? Uh, oh. Uh, okay. 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 The atmosphere is good though. Okay. 
So yeah, it was basically just a bunch of loud noises that randomly happened as you walked down the corridor. So this next game was called Glow. It was some sort of puzzle game that I was working on. I'm not gonna lie, it took me like 10 minutes just to solve the first puzzle, but you basically had to like hit these glowy balls against these cubes to try and get all of them the same color. And then eventually I figured out how to do it using this clue that was on the wall. And it moved me on to the next stage. But the next stage was kind of weird, it seemed like it wasn't even finished, so I don't really know what I was doing in this game. All I know is that the glow effect seemed to be the thing, it was pretty cool. This one was called Think Time. This was a shooter game where you had to complete a level, but you had this special ability where you could slow down time. You basically had to kill these BB-8 looking robots to complete the level and move on to the next one. I completed the first level, but then I moved on to the next one and there didn't seem to be any enemies, like it wasn't completed. And then I played another level which seemed to have tons of enemies and it was actually pretty hard, I couldn't beat it. Anyways, that was think time, let's move on. Okay, this next project was actually one of my bigger ones. I was trying to make a full real-time strategy game. I actually made a YouTube series on me making this, but there was essentially a few things that I actually finished, collecting resources from berry bushes and trees, and then you could build houses, and these houses could build more villagers. And then I think the last thing I added was the like barracks, and the barracks could make these military units, but I never actually added fighting or really added anything else. I realized that this project was way bigger than I could handle at the time. But nonetheless, I learned a lot. I had a lot of fun modeling all these low poly buildings and foliage, and I thought the map looked cool in general. But it was just a big learning experience, and I moved on to something else. Okay, so this next one was called Cardboard Zombies. It was an Android game that was made for Google VR. It was basically a wave-based shooter game where you had to shoot the zombies that were basically coming at you. And eventually they got to you and you died. And you're basically just supposed to try and beat your high score. And every time you killed the zombies, you collected this cardboard, which you could use to buy more weapons. I don't really know why I stopped working on this. I think it was just my code was getting really messy, so I got lazy and didn't want to work on it. This game was called Soaring with the Ancients. I made this for Ludum Dare 36, a 48 hour game design challenge. It was basically just an exploration game where you had to find all five of these locations in this map. But the controls and flying mechanics were terrible. I, I don't think I knew how to properly program flying. So I found myself places like underneath the map or in the middle of nowhere and I had no clue where it was. So I could definitely see why I didn't win the competition. But honestly, going underneath the map was flipping cool. This next game, I worked on for almost over a year. This was my multiplayer FPS game. I got interested in kind of learning how to network using Unity, so I wanted to play with my friends and make games that my friends could play with me. So like I said, it was a first person shooter. You could basically shoot each other and try and get the most kills. There were three different maps. One was like a forest map, the other one was like an arena, and the third one was like a bank robbery map. I really worked on this game a lot, like I said, a whole year because multiplayer takes a long time to implement properly. This here is one of the game modes I was working on. It was like an attack and defend game mode. So one team was the cops that were like breaching these building that the bad guys were in. It was kind of cool, you could like blow open walls and breach in doors and even blow open a hatch on the roof. I thought it was pretty cool. But like a lot of my other games, this game got really complicated and the code also started getting pretty messy. So I decided to move on to other stuff because it was taking up a lot of time. So almost a year later, I started working on this game. It was called Cuboidal Drift. This was supposed to be another Android game. It was basically a level based game where you had to get to the end of the level without getting hit by spikes or pistons or just falling off the level. The main goal of the game was to beat your best time on every level. I also worked on a multiplayer feature so you could play with your friends and other people with Android devices. This game is actually pretty polished and I would say it was ready to release at least an initial version so I don't really know why I didn't. I think I just didn't get around to it, which is kind of unfortunate because it's basically a finished game. This is Cat Owner Simulator. Me and my team made this game for the Northern Game Design Challenge that was hosted in my local city. 
It was basically a 48 hour game making challenge. And the theme that was given to us was a simulation game that involved cats, so Cat Owner Simulator. The purpose of the game was you were a cat owner and you had to take care of your cats, so you had to feed them, clean their litter box, make sure they had something to drink, and you earned money by selling cat photos. And man, you could get a lot of cats. Anyways, it was kind of a joke. We ended up getting the top five position though in the competition, so that was cool. Exactly one year later, me and my team participated in the next Northern Game Design Challenge, and we created a game called Rogue Robot. The theme of the game jam was, you are the villain. So we created this construction robot that was essentially a villain to the people, but he thought that he was saving the world from the pollution that the people are making. But anyways, the people thought he was a villain, so they sent the police after him and the military, and you basically had to control the robot and destroy the city that was polluting the world without getting hit by the police or military vehicles that were chasing after you. The more damage you did to the city, the higher score you got. Our team ended up actually winning first place in this competition, so that was really cool to accomplish. Uh, we put a lot of work into the game, especially for only having 48 hours to do so. If you want to play either of these two last games, the link will be down in the description. This next one was called The Game of Life, but rather it wasn't really a game, it was more of a simulation based off of Conway's Game of Life. It was basically a simulation of an ecosystem interacting with each other, so fire burned trees, trees grew on grass, sheep uh, ate grass, and sheep died from fire and lack of grass. This was a project for school, but I thought it was just mesmerizing to watch the simulation happen and see if fire would actually burn everything or if trees would completely grow. It was kind of interesting. Okay, this is the last project I worked on, I think. It was an autonomous vehicle simulation. Basically, I was trying to make this vehicle be able to drive autonomously using raycasts to sense where the lines were on the road and where other cars were and where oncoming intersections were. I also made it so that they were able to understand right of way at intersections. This above view here shows a lot of the raycasts and logic of the line following features. This was a, another school project, but again, it was just kind of mesmerizing to watch these cars interact with each other. So that was most of the projects that I've made in Unity in the past five years. Many of them stay unfinished, but all of them were learning experiences. And I'm sure in the next five years I'll be making many more projects, a lot of them not finished, but some of them will actually finish. So I hope that sharing my Unity journey with you inspired you in any way, and if you're more interested in any of the games you see, some of the details are down in the descriptions on certain ones that I've finished mostly. But until next time, thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. See you later.